Primera. Let us do question five. In the diagram, we know that AB is a diameter. I'll just stop right there. Immediately when they say AB is a diameter, I will look at AB and check if AB subtends any angle at the circumference. And you will notice that it does subtend an angle at the circumference, and that is C. So angle C, which is C1 plus C2, will be equal to 90 degrees because of that. By just being told that that is a diameter. And then they said of the circle with center O. And when they say that O is a center, and we have... Well, it doesn't matter whether AB is a diameter or not, but immediately when they say O is a center, any line drawn from O to the circumference, we call it the radius. And the radiuses of the same circle will be equal. That means OB will be equal to OA and OD. All of those will be equal. But at the same time, when I look at triangle, OAD, because OA is equals to OD, it means that even the angles that are opposite those sides will also be equal. That means D1, well, D2 plus D3 will be equal to A1. That's it. And then I'll stop there. That's all I can do. Then they say D and E are points on the circle so that OD or DO is parallel to EB. Now, immediately when they say that, um, but before I even get there, I don't think I'm done with point number one. Um, there's something I missed in point number one. In point number one, where they told me that O is a center, I noticed that O1 is subtended by D A, all right, and since O one is subtended by D A, I looked for another angle at the circumference that is subtended by the same chord, which is D A, and the only angle that is subtended by that chord beside O one it is C one. Now. C1 is at the circumference, O1 is at the center, and both of them are subtended by the same chord, which is DA. That means angle at the center is twice angle at the circumference. That tells you that O1 will be equal to twice C1. Okay, now I'm done with point number one. That's one thing I missed with point number one. Now, point two, where they say that D and E are points on the circle so that DO is parallel to ED. Immediately when they say DO is parallel to ED, I saw F, okay, for fun, if you remember what I said. Parallel lines give rise to three conditions, corresponding angles, alternate angles, and the last one will be co-interior angles. Here I see corresponding angles. Corresponding angles are angles that are on the same line, on the same side of parallel lines and on the same side of the um, of the line, which is AB, all right? And one thing I can tell you is that O1 will be equal to B1. Why are they equal? And that is because, um, oh, I forgot this word earlier on. That's why I hesitated a little bit there. Corresponding angles must be on the same side of parallel lines and they must also be on the same side of the transversal. Okay, transversal, guys, forgive me. Like I told you, I taught geometry a long time ago. So to remember these things, I have to remember them as I go through the video sometimes. Um, now, all I... Because the only angles that are on the same side of parallel lines and on the same side of the transversal, the transversal will be that AB, will be O1 and B1. That's why those two are equal. And that is because DO is parallel to EB. And 
Um, C is a point on the circle as shown. Okay, fine. And then they said O is equals to, I think that was supposed to have been O1. Let me correct it quickly. Now, immediately when they gave me O1, oh, that opened a can of worms because I already have the angles there. Um, the first one says that if O1 is 40, then I knew that B1 will also be 40 and um, C1 will be 20 degrees. And A1, when you add A1 with D1 plus D2 and add it with 40, those are some of the angles, interior angles of a triangle. And when you calculate A1 there, because A1 will be the same as D1 plus D2, because those are angles that are opposite equal sides, it ended up giving me A1 as 70. And if A1 is 70, that means D1 plus D2 will also be equal to 70. Got it? And basically, that is it. For now, that is it. Okay, let's go to the first question. The first question asked us to determine A1. All I did is that I focused on triangle OAC, right? In triangle OAC, what I know is that, um, well, was it OAC or OAD? I think it was OAD. Let me just confirm that. Correct, it was OAD, not OAC. Now, in that triangle, what I know is that if I add A1, add it with D1, D2 plus D3, and add it with O1, I will get 180 degrees, which is sum of interior angles of a triangle. And all I know is that O1 will be equal to D1 plus D, I mean, D1 plus D3. And all of those will simply give me, and that is because that is, those are two angles that are opposite equal sides okay so we know that oa is equals to od therefore angles that are opposite those two uh, will also be equal those two sides will also be equal and that will be a1 as well as d d2 plus d3 all right and the reason why i say they're equal is because we know that oa and OD are radiuses. And I specified when we started, radiuses of the same circle will be equal. Radiuses of the same circle will be equal. And that is why we've got um, OA being equal to OD, all right? Now use your mathematical skills there. What we know is that O1 is equals to 40 degrees, and it's your choice. You can say A1 is equals to, instead of writing A1, where there's A1, you can just write D2 plus D3, but that one was long. So what I did is that 
I solved A1. And when I solved for A1, where there is D2 plus D3, I substituted A1 and I ended up having two A1s. And two A1s were equal to 180 minus 40 degrees because I had transposed the 40 to the other side. And immediately when I did that, I divided by two and A1 ended up being 70 degrees. That's how you calculate A1. And please note that this information, I get at it immediately when I was reading the information. It was already in my diagram before I even um, read the questions. It was already in my diagram and it comes from the information that I read next to the diagram. So don't read for free, guys. Don't read for Mahala. Make sure that Everything you do in your exam results in you getting a mark, including reading. So when you read a question, make sure that you put in, put everything in the diagram and that will make your life easy. So when you answer questions, you won't have to go back and reread what you already read because everything that you read is in the diagram already. We good. Okay. Let me go to the second question. The second question wants us to calculate E. Let me see where E is in the diagram. Now, question is, how do I calculate E, guys? Okay, you have to notice this, okay? E is part of a quadrilateral. And what makes the quadrilateral is just that when you take AD and connect it with ED and connect it with EB and connect it with AB, that is a quadrilateral. Now, what qualifies for a four figure to be a quadrilateral? Because we know that it's a quadrilateral, it's a polynomial with four straight lines. But what makes it to be a cyclic quad? We know that it's a quadrilateral, but what makes it a cyclic quad? It's when the vertices of that quadrilateral lie on the circumference of the circle. A is on the circumference, D is on the circumference, E is on the circumference, and B is on the circumference. All of them must be on the circumference of the circle. And that's what makes that whole quadrilateral a cyclic quadrilateral. Are we together there? So I can conclude that this is a cyclic quadrilateral because all the vertices lie on the circumference. Now, immediately when a, B, E, D is a cyclic quadrilateral. I knew that if I have A on the opposite side and the angle that is opposite A in that cyclic, um, cyclic quadrilateral is E, when I add A1 with angle E, they are supplementary meaning that they add up to 180. And this only applies if a quadrilateral is a cyclic quadrilateral. Are we together? Now, if I add A1 with E, I shall get 180. Those are opposite angles of a cyclic quad. We know that they're supplementary. Therefore, if I want E, because I already have A as 70, if I want E, I'll take 180 minus 70 degrees, and that will give me 110 degrees. You could have used another method to get that 110 degrees, but make sure that you give reasons for whatever you used, okay? Now they want us to calculate C1. I think I do have information about C1, don't I? Yes, I do. I know that C1 is half O1, because O1 is twice C1. Angle at the center is twice angle at the circumference, but only if they're subtended by the same arc or same chord. Here it was easy because it was a chord. It's a straight line, all right, whose endpoints lie at the circumferences of a circle. That's what a chord is. That's why, guys, I said definitions are key, all right? Definitions are key. Now, here I know that 2C1 will be equal to O1. Angle at center is twice angle at the circumference. I've got O1, which is 40. Therefore, I'll divide both sides by 2, and I will get C1, which is 20. Easy, peasy, lemon squeezy. Now they want us to calculate B1. Okay, let me go back and see what do they mean by B1. I told you guys I have a very short memory. 
So I have to go back. Oh, they mean that. Those are corresponding angles. So B1 will be equal to O1. Why are they equal? It is because we've got corresponding angles created by vertical. Um, I don't want to say vertical, but um, we have OD being parallel to ED. We call them um, parallel lines, not vertical, actually. It's parallel lines. So we have OD being parallel to ED, and that is why those are corresponding angles. And they're corresponding angles because they are on the same side of the transversal. They're also on the same side of the... So those two conditions must be met for us to have corresponding angles. Same side of the transversal and same side of parallel lines. So those are just the amplitudes of your parallel lines, right? And we'll end up having B1 being equal to 40 degrees because O1 is 40 degrees. Now with E, they're asking us if AE is constructed. So you needed to go to your graph and construct AE. So that's what I'm gonna do as well. Let me construct AE. I forgot to mark this, so I hope everything that I did here is correct. Um, now I've got, I've constructed AE, and immediately when I constructed AE, I noticed that AEB, that angle AEB, is opposite, or it was subtended by a diameter, a chord we call a diameter. This chord, why do we call it a diameter? It's because it passes through the center and that makes the angle AEB 90 degrees because it's at the circumference and it's subtended by a diameter. Okay, what else are they saying? When I read further, they say that, okay, it's constructed and intersects um, DO at F, all right. We need to determine the length of AE. The diameter of the circle is nine units. So they're telling us that um, AB is nine units. And what I notice is that we've got 40 degrees inside and 40 degrees is opposite the angle that we are looking for, which is AE. And we've got the hypotenuse in that triangle. The hypotenuse will be AB. So hypotenuse opposite. One ratio comes into mind and that is sine. So sine of 40 will be AE divided by the hypotenuse, which is 9 degrees. The hypotenuse was given to us as 9 degrees. So all I did was just to apply sine of 40 degrees will be AE divided by 9 degrees. And I multiplied both sides by 9 to get rid of the denominator. So I ended up having 9 times sine 40 will be equal to AE. Put that into your calculator and you'll end up having AE uh, approximating 5.8. And that's it. Easy, eh? Just know your rules that is all know your rules know your theorems and for you to understand the theorems better is to prove them okay prove the theorems as you go through them and that'll help you to understand what is going on and therefore you won't even need to Memorize the theorem itself. As long as you understood the proof, you'll be fine. Now, um, try this one on your own. Here are the questions. Remember, guys, if I'm moving too fast, you just pause and you write, you write everything down and then press play when you're done. You dig? I hope you do, right? Um, that is it from me. Please, if you do dig, um, make sure you like and you subscribe, share with your friends, and let everybody know about this channel. Hold on.